And that one gesture spoke to cultural fit so strongly that it really moved that particular vendor from second or third place into first place because it said, you get us, you understand us. So Hey, B2B salespeople, my strategic selling group members, welcome back. I've got Kean with me again. Hello, John. Nice to be here. Kean McLaughlin is it's one person I know that spends his whole life talking to customers about why they made decisions. So you learn an enormous amount that the rest of us in the sales world really don't, don't get to see. I'm very privileged, John, um, to play at I suppose you'd call it the intersection of the sales cycle and the buying cycle, and to get both sides of the story and, and be able to bring the two sets of perspectives together. It's, um, it, it is a very lucky and a very privileged position to be in. What I want to ask you is, based on that, mm. why do customers really make decisions versus what we think they're making and basing a decision on? It's a great question. Um, if I look at why we think we win, maybe first, um, we in very and there's lots and lots of different reasons and obviously we're talking about you know the higher end of B2B sales maybe but but lots of different reasons but the ones that come most frequently when we talk to uh, salespeople they talk about um, we think we won based on price we had you know we, we had the sharpest price or the best price point our product or our service was clearly superior um, on the quality of our team or the quality of our people they're the ones that tend to crop up most interestingly when we talk to customers and even their customers about why they made their decisions um they they absolutely do talk about the quality of their people that tends to be um but that's number one number versus one number three or four yeah. or, or five or six yeah. the quality of the people invariably is, is is the top one um but cultural fit which is uh, another interesting one um comes up very often you know we we liked them we trusted them they understood us there's a there was a great example that a um customer gave of um one of the sales team coming in and recognizing that even though they were talking to this particular um, group of people who were white collar, the organization more broadly was blue collar. And they went out and did a very, very small thing, which was they got um, some ruggedized iPads and said, you know, maybe your, your team could use these when they're out on site, when they're, you know, drop, you know, concrete on them and water and all that sort of thing, and they'll be protected. Mm -hmm. And they could even take them home on the weekends and their kids could play with them and they, you know, they couldn't get damaged. And that one gesture spoke to cultural fit so strongly that it really moved that particular vendor from second or third place into first place because it said, you get us, you understand us. So cultural fit is huge. And the other one we hear a lot, and this is kind of a catch-all, is you know, you collaborated with us, you challenged us, you managed and mitigated our risks, things like that where you really went went above and beyond the call of duty tend to be, you know, why customers actually do make decisions in our favor. So we like you as people. Mm -hmm. You had a cultural fit. You really got us. Correct. And finally, you're able to bring value to the table is what through yeah. that cultural fit, through that understanding Correct. of us. And you'd obviously done your discovery because you could take all those learnings about us and you could create that into something which is of, of not just value to us, but it feels so incredibly um, specific and relevant and personalized to exactly what it is that we're looking for. Yeah, and, and you use the word challenge, uh, teach, lead, and so on. Correct. To me, that's creating value because if I can help them think through the, the challenges and issues they've got in their business and I can help them take take them through a thinking journey yeah. to ultimately a, a way in which they can address those issues and get the outcomes they're looking for in their business, yeah. Hey, I'm creating a lot of value for them, yep. and if I've done that because I culturally understand them and we fit well together, mm -hmm. and, and we have great people that can that can take them through that value, put the value on the table. You're there. You're there. And notice I didn't mention product and I didn't mention price in any of that. Now, you know the reverse question is why why do we lose and why do we think we lose? And what we hear often is we hear that. People do feel they lost on price. Uh, another one that we hear quite often is we lost um, because we think they were always going to go with an incumbent or they were always going to do nothing and, or we lost maybe because we didn't have sufficient executive sponsorship or we didn't have the right kind of uh, stakeholder um, value in the mm -hmm. business. Interestingly, from a customer's perspective, what do we hear? We hear you didn't listen or you didn't really take the time to understand our needs. Right. We saw you as unprofessional or we saw you as a high risk option for us to pursue. Um, and the one that really frustrates me, in fact, all of those frustrate me, the one that really frustrates me, you focus too much on your solution. You didn't focus enough on our problem. 
We hear that all the time. Ah, uh, yes. So it's that kind of show up and throw up mentality, yeah. right? This is what I've got in the bag, so I'm going to show it to you today, and yeah. you just sit there quietly until I'm finished. That's that's a crazy approach to take, and it's yeah, and, and, and it's wasting golden opportunity. Last time we talked about customer revolution, um, but the reality is in sales, for me, going right back 20, 30, 40 years ago, I've been around a while, Sure. Um, it, it, it was never show up and throw up. The best salespeople I knew in the 1970s and 1980s were the ones that, that had the understanding of work, working personally with their customer, uh, that really worked on understanding the customer's issues from the business point of view and not yeah. coming in and saying, I've got a great solution and let me tell you all about it. Yeah, you're, you're the nail, I'm the hammer, and I'll hit it in the same way you know, over and over again. It's, it's you know, one of the biggest... Um, mistakes I think that a lot of organizations make is we, we talk about our what's what's your win rate uh, we, you know we're winning three out of ten or we're winning five out of ten or whatever but that's a flawed concept because actually the question is what's the competitive win rate in your market and how many of those deals are you actually not involved in how many of those deals are you not privy to you don't know about and that's a much more uh, important question and then we need to recognize how inherently valuable the opportunities we do have are and the fact that if we've done a halfway decent job then invariably we've earned the right to this feedback to go and talk to our customers extract these insights and then go away and do something with them but too few companies are doing it at the moment look i've got a customer in the cyber security marketplace and i, I tell you they're winning close to a hundred percent of the deals that they work on right uh, they they select them uh, i'd use the old term qualify well mm -hmm. but but the qualification is very much along the lines you're talking about uh, are we able to work with this organisation? Sure. Do we have a cultural fit? Are we able to bring value to them? Uh, you know, can we challenge and, and lead them? And, and are they responding in that way? Mm. Because when we have that relationship, it probably doesn't matter too much what the product is, as long as you've got a good product. Correct. You're going to win the business. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Your product and your price are your ticket to the dance. If you don't have, they're not at the right level, you're not even going to get in the door, you're not going to get to the short list. But assuming you have that, the next question becomes, what else are we doing? How else are we, are we looking to differentiate? And that's the, that's the crux of the, the win versus loss conversation. And that comes back then to EQ and all the other things we've been discussing in the last few uh, interviews. We've yes, had. indeed. Kian, thank you very much. And I think hopefully out there, that's really good value. It is for me. I'm learning all the time from these wonderful people I'm, I'm interviewing. And, and I really want to thank Kian for coming along. Let me know if you've got any other questions you want me to put at Kian next time I get together with him. Uh, and in the meantime... I wish you success with taking all this in uh, the insight that Ken and others are bringing to the table. Have a wonderful year of selling. I uh, hope you're meeting your quota, uh, but remember your focus is on the customer and helping the customer achieve their outcomes. It's not on you getting the order. Ken, thank you very much. Thanks, John.